Hi everyone, Sarah Picaro. And today's video is going to be about one of the most tragic side effects of childhood trauma. And that side effect is losing trust in yourself. You lose trust in yourself as a result of childhood trauma. And it is one of the most tragic side effects because then you question everything. Your mind is so jaded so distorted, so confused by why you didn't receive the love that you needed, the safety, the comfort, and the trust that you needed. As a little child, little children come into this world having no choice but to trust their parents, learning about what it takes to trust and expecting trust to be there because trust is our birthright. We have a right to trust. We have a right to feel loved. We have a right to feel safe. We have a right to feel connected. And that starts with ourselves. But losing trust in yourself is one of the most tragic side effects of childhood trauma. People that I've worked with, myself included, who've experienced early childhood trauma and childhood neglect. And I'm not talking about trauma in just the big, big way. Neglect is a form of trauma. Not getting the attention, the love, the connection, not being told by your parents or by your caregivers that they love you, that they're proud of you, that they believe in you, that they trust you. Having them always doubt you, always second guess you, always question you, always tell you that everything you're doing is wrong is a form of childhood trauma, is a form of childhood neglect. It's emotional abuse, emotional trauma. So it doesn't always look like these big, big T traumas and all of that leads to you losing trust in yourself as a teenager, as a young adult, as an adult, you get to this place internally, mentally, where you second guess and you question everything because you don't trust yourself. That is one of the biggest impacts of childhood trauma, one of the biggest effects of childhood trauma, and one of the most tragic ones. When you can't trust yourself, you're going to look outside of yourself for that trust. You're going to place that trust into the hands of other people. And when that trust is placed in the hands of narcissists, people who were manipulators, abusers, who will use it against you, twist it and turn it against you, that loss of self-trust is even further perpetuated. Even more internal damage is done because then you have validation and proof that you can't be trusted to place your trust in the hands of someone that you trusted. That leads to people wanting to just completely isolate from everyone, wanting to be left alone, wanting to not depend on anyone else because everyone in their life that they depended on, they feel has used and abused their trust, has let them down. And it leads to a place where you don't even trust yourself anymore. So if you found yourself in toxic, emotionally unavailable, emotionally abusive, narcissistic relationships, that's one of the biggest impacts is losing trust in yourself. You say things like, my picker's broken. I can't be trusted. And you believe that that's true. And you have a long list of evidence to prove that to be true. So you truly develop that as an internal unconscious belief about yourself because of all those things that happen from your childhood, from your adolescence, in adulthood, that lead to you not feeling that it's safe to trust yourself. I had a recent uh, transformational session with a client and that's exactly the core that we got to. She continued to say, I want to, I want to. And there's a huge difference between wanting to, doing, to do something and actually doing something. And in her case, it was, I want to trust myself. I want to feel safe. But the unconscious moments that presented when I said, do you? Not I want to, because that's just a dream, a hope, a wish, a desire. That's somewhere out there. That's not here with you now in the present moment. There's a big difference between tr trusting yourself and feeling safe versus wanting to trust yourself and wanting to feel safe. You can feel the difference in your body. And it was quite profound, the shifts that were taking place through our session. And at the end of the session, did and knew that she did. 
So a disrupted childhood or a childhood that is riddled with emotional neglect or parents who are using words to build your worlds, like it, they don't trust you. They don't believe you. Parents who are always using words that have you second guess and question yourself that they know so much better than you. And yes, parents have different experiences, but when the child feels that nothing they do is right, nothing they do is ever good enough, they begin to question themselves, turn that inward and turn that internal. And that doesn't easily go away, especially when it's been ingrained and embedded in you all of your life. So it's a process to learn that as well. So if your childhood was one that was disrupted, you had little T traumas, big T traumas, you experience a disconnection from yourself. This leads to disassociation as an adult, to feeling completely disconnected from yourself, from having this out-of-body experience because the inner self, the true core self wants to feel safe trusting itself, but doesn't because of all of these external experiences that impacted the inward experience and the safety and the trust connection. When you connected with trust and then that trust was taken or broken, you question that connection. You also question where you are at in it. So then you begin to feel disconnected from yourself. And there's a drive, an internal need and drive for children to protect the idea that they have of their caregivers, of their parents, to not make them wrong because they're up here and children are down here. So there's this inner drive to protect them, even when the adults and the caregivers were neglectful and were emotionally abusive or emotionally unavailable. There's this inner drive to protect them and keep them safe. And we'll give our way our own safe trust and protection to give it to them, to those who don't give it back. So then we feel like we've completely lost it as an adult. To maintain the sense that you're safe with that person who's doing that to you, there's a core survival protective mechanism and coping strategy that takes place. And anything that takes place over time that gets repeated gets strengthened. So now there's this really strong connection to giving away your power, to not trusting, to not feeling safe. And a very small part that still hopes, wishes, and dreams of having that safety of having that trust. And that's the very reason why in that session, that client said, there's a small part, almost like a small little ball inside of me that does feel safe. But because it's so much smaller than the part of me that questions safety and doesn't feel safe and doesn't trust, it's like it's not strong enough to overpower the part that doesn't. And that's what happens over time, especially when it happens early on. This client had an experience of being in her crib and experiencing abandonment, being scared, frightened, terrified, afraid because of the situation that was happening and because of the betrayal that was happening that ended up breaking apart her core and original family. So on the flip side to this, in order to make sense of this really confusing, emotionally unsafe environment as children, Children tend to self-blame. They tend to take on the blame themselves as they're giving away their sense of safety and trust to the adults and caregivers in their lives. And they tend to take the blame on themselves and doubt themselves and doubt their intuition and go against their internal instincts. Our internal instincts are, are aligned towards truth, towards light, towards love, towards joy, towards expression, towards safety, towards happiness. But when we experience things like that, even, even words like, why'd you do that? What's wrong with you? Why aren't you like so-and-so? Why can't you be like words that, that indicate comparison and judgment, words that lead to feelings of shame and guilt. They also lead to feelings of blame and we blame ourselves. We don't blame our, our parents or caregivers. They know better, right? They're older, they're more experienced they know better and they do know more about many, many things, but how can that be true to say that they know better for you than you know for you? They're not you. <laughs> so how can that be true? But words create that. And when you hear the words or there's a lack of words that you need to hear, like, I love you. I'm proud of you. I trust you. I believe in you. And there's a, 
void of a safe, trusting, loving environment, the child tends to blame themselves, tends to doubt themselves. If a child steps in to try and fix or change a situation, but they notice a parent is in pain and what they attempted to do to get that parent out of pain or to please them or make that parent proud of them, if it fails, the child takes that on themselves, begins to doubt their selves and their abilities, their strengths and begins to see them as weaknesses, as failures, as letdowns, as not good enough, despite all the energy, time, and effort they put into feeling like it always falls short. And that carries on into adulthood, that carries on into relationships and easily leads you into the hands of toxic relationships, abusive relationships, emotionally unavailable, emotionally unfulfilled or satisfied relationships, all because that was a pattern that was modeled when you were growing up, when you were a child. So losing trust in yourself, now you don't trust yourself. The majority of people I work with don't even trust themselves to make a decision. They have a difficult time and they often ask me, what do I think? If you ask me that, we're going to dive deeper into why the need to ask me that is there. Because I'm not you. I don't know what's best for you. But I will guide you into discovering for you what's best for you, because you know that, but it's been covered up by self-doubt, by confusion, by wanting to look outside yourself, by wanting someone else to step in and do it for you, because then you won't be a disappointment to them. Then you won't be feeling dissatisfied or displeased with the outcome. Then you won't be to blame. Then you don't have to be responsible because carrying all of that is heavy is not fun. And all of that takes you further and further away from trusting yourself. So if you were ready to release that, to disconnect from all of that and reconnect with trusting yourself, believing in yourself, knowing and feeling your sense of self-worth, your trust, and that you are enough, I would love to connect because it's not fun to continue to carry that around that loss of trust in yourself, it's still there. It more than likely feels like it's this big and everything else is much stronger than it. So removing and releasing all the feelings of heaviness of burden so that you can reclaim that trust and joy and confidence in yourself to make decisions with confidence, with ease, with grace, with trust, with self-assurance. And I would love to connect with you. You can find more information in the links in the description below this video. And I look forward to reaching out to connecting. I have an incredible program that will take you through that. If you're looking for something that's more self-guided, transforming past pain to present power, it takes you through that. There are transformational sessions and experiences in there, as well as powerful tools and exercises to allow you to reclaim that self-trust, sense of self-worth and release the anxiety, the heaviness, the burden, the shame, the guilt, the blame, all of that stuff that's stored up emotionally and energetically in your body. So there's that. We can also see if we're a good fit to work together one-to-one -to -one if you're looking for more of that. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you soon.